What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Ghost of the Night, a hauntings and paranormal podcast. I am your host, Will Sam. Thank you so very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to check out this podcast. Today, we're talking about opening the paranormal door. This is a way to get into the paranormal and what happens when you get there. So, stick around. Ghost in the Night with Phil Sams. Okay, now what I mean by opening the paranormal door really comes about for one reason. And it really what got me thinking about this particular way of thinking, I guess, about the paranormal is a lot of people talk about how they bring things home or think they get attachments to or things get attachments to them. And I'm not saying that that's not true, but one way to open the paranormal door to get into the paranormal world is to just go out and be a part of it. The more you expose yourself to the paranormal, the more likely you are to actually experience the paranormal. And what really, getting back to what really sparked my idea of this podcast episode topic was I recently came across an article regarding a haunted house. And it was Jonathan Davis, who is the front man of Corn, basically says his house is haunted. And the more I read the article and started thinking about it, you know, he exposes himself to a lot of weird shit you know some of their stuff is a little darker he not saying that demonic or anything or satanic or anything but you know he exposes himself to darker topics not bubble gum and lollipops and so therefore he is more likely to have paranormal or ghostly activity in his home because he's open to it and he puts himself in that situation by some of the subject matter he talks about he is a good friend i believe of good old Zach Baggins. And so when you immerse yourself in weird shit or the paranormal, you are more likely to actually have an encounter or your home is more likely to be a little haunted, more likely to have those paranormal experiences. And I come at it a different way. I've, I've stated a million times on this podcast, you know, I've always had a little bit of paranormal activity in just about every location that I have laid my head down and went to sleep in and I have called home except for where I live right now. I just recently moved and I haven't experienced anything in this location. And I've kind of, you know, just for a quick side story, I recently got engaged. I moved in with her and her kids and I we've been together for years. So I've spent a lot of time in this house before I moved into it and never experienced anything. Now that I've lived here for a couple months, I still haven't experienced anything. And I go out and actually actively look for the paranormal. So I expose myself to that. Now, is that to say that I might not get any kind of paranormal activity in this location? No, I might not. Or I might. Who knows? That is the beauty of the paranormal. I don't know. I might have an experience here at some point. But the point of the matter is the more you put yourself out there, the more you dive into the paranormal, you are more likely to open yourself up. And that is the key. When you experiment or you actively search out paranormal activity, you are more likely to open yourself up, which will cause you to see more paranormal activity or experience paranormal activity. If you buy a Jeep, you know, the old Jeep Wrangler, if you buy a Jeep Wrangler, I guarantee you the, you'll be driving down the road. You'll pass a million Jeep Wranglers. It seems like everybody has a Jeep ring. But yet, when you were driving a Chevy, odds are you didn't see a lot of Jeeps. Now, does that mean there was less Jeeps on the road? There were more Jeeps on the road because you actually bought one? No, that just means you weren't open to it. You weren't actively looking for it. The same thing goes in the paranormal, I believe, is my theory. Now, I could be completely full of shit. I could be completely wrong. You're more than welcome to tell me otherwise. Just send me an email at gitmpodcast at gmail.com or follow me on Twitter at night underscore ghost that those two different ways you can tell me I'm completely full of shit or I'm an idiot. That's fine. Or you can even say you can agree with me, but think about it. The more you driving that Jeep more, you're going to see more because you're more open to it. You're sitting in a Jeep. You're seeing more Jeeps. It's not that you're seeing more Jeeps. You're just noticing more Jeeps. Same thing with the paranormal. 
the more you dive into the paranormal, if you paranormal investigate or you start experiencing maybe a little something, you start thinking about it a little bit more. So you might, you're more tuned in. You're more keen to notice that kind of stuff. Notice little random things that other people might not pick up on. A knock, a footstep, something being moved out of place or hearing a disembodied voice or hearing a conversation that you don't know where it's coming from. You're more likely to see that the more you put yourself in that position or the more you open yourself up, hence opening the paranormal door. So a lot of things go into demonic and the nasty shit that a lot of people talk about. A lot of people fear evil spirits, the demons. And I'm here to tell you, I've done three or four podcasts in the past about demons and I'll kind of reiterate my thoughts. I'm not completely sure demons are demons. Demon, I don't like the, to use the word demon because that has such a tie to religion. religion. Religion does not have a monopoly on demonic activity. I believe a demon is misinterpreted. It is actually more of an evil type spirit, a sinister type spirit. It's not necessarily a dark angel of Satan. Whatever. Take the religion out of it. Demonic activity is more sinister, more darker energy. That is my philosophy. And if you dive into that a little bit more, you look at black magic, you look at things that have a little bit more negative energy in them or topics of darker stuff, you might experience more demonic type activity or more, there I even said it, see, I got to break that habit myself, more evil, more sinister, more darker paranormal experience, which can be interpreted as demonic. So you put yourself in that position. Now, how do you go about doing this? How do you do, go about overcoming this? Is just be open. Be open to the idea that there are things in this world you don't understand that you can't explain and just let it go. There's no need to fear. If you hear a knock or footsteps coming up the stairs and, all of a and you're expecting somebody to walk through the door and nobody walks through the door, don't fear that. Fear should come in if somebody you hear footsteps and somebody comes to the store up the stairs and somebody comes in the door. You don't know. That's when fear should take in. But if nobody comes in, you go look, nobody's up there. Okay. That could be paranormal or it could just be the house settling. There's a ton of reasons that could that could have caused that. But you have to keep an open mind and don't be fearful. Because if there is such a thing as dark energy, which I do believe, but if there is evil spirits, they feed on the fear. They feed on your anxiety. They want you to fear them. And if you don't fear them, you take away their power. You maybe not take away, but you limit their power. And that is something to keep in mind. Don't be scared if you hear a disembodied voice or say your car keys get moved. Just chalk it up as, okay, I remember one experience that I had uh, last year, two years ago in my old home where I had activity. I was laying down to go to bed. Due to my condition, I need to, I can't sleep on my back because of the back issues that I have. I have to sleep on the side. And I like to sleep on my right side most often. I mean, I switch back and forth. Not to get too much information, but, you know, I switch from right side to left side. But I always start out on my right side. And I just laid down, just hit the lights. I was on my right side, facing, at the time, a wall. So I was looking, basically looking at the wall. I hadn't been down 30 seconds. I was still kind of in the process of going through my day in my mind before I fall asleep and what I have to do tomorrow. And something grabbed my shoulder and pulled me to my back. Now, did I get scared? Did I get fidgety? Did I go into panic mode? Absolutely not. I basically said, come on now. It's bedtime. Let me sleep. You know, I didn't get scared. It didn't, I didn't give it that interaction. If it was a darker spirit or if it was an evil spirit, I didn't give it that energy that it needed to maybe move forward or do more. If it was just a run of the mill plain spirit, then odds are it wanted my attention. It got my attention because I acknowledge it. Hey, okay, I'm going to go to sleep. You know, let's do this another day or do this tomorrow. It got noticed, which if that's what it wanted, it, it got it. But if it was an evil spirit or evil entity or darker energy, it didn't get my fear to feed on. Same thing when you go on investigations. You know, scary movies have ruined it for everybody because it's taught us to be scared of those situations. If you go on an investigation, don't be scared. 
because there's nothing really to be scared of. I'm not 100% sure these spirits can really hurt you. I think a lot of it can be diagnosed as mental issues, you know, some of these possessions. Because if you look at a possession and mental issues or mental problems, which is such a big topic in today's society, it's very similar. Some of the same conditions are in both. And it's very hard to distinguish between the two conditions. So it's very, it's a very tricky diagnosis. Not to say that there is not such a thing as demonic possession or evil possession or just possession. But I think a lot of it is misdiagnosed. But to get back to whatever it is, if you put yourself in the situation to experience evil, odds are you're going to experience evil. But you put yourself in the situation to experience good, pleasant, you're going to get the same experience in the spiritual world. That's the same. It's pretty much that way in life. Just the, If you surround yourself with good people, you're going to have positive energy. If you surround yourself by jackasses, you're going to have some shitty experiences. I'm not sure the paranormal world is that much different. Whatever you surround yourself with or you spend time thinking about, you are going to have the same interactions, the same experiences in your personal life. And if you, like me, kind of talk about the evil side and the positive side, I could have both. But the bottom line is I'm not going to freak out on either. And that is my advice to anybody experiencing paranormal activity. Don't freak out. Educate yourself. Find out what you're dealing with. That is one way to look at it. And it's still a working theory. I'm still thinking about it. And I'll maybe talk about it more. But let me know what you think at night underscore ghost on Twitter. You can also find us on Facebook at ghost in the night or you can follow us on instagram at ghost underscore night underscore podcast all different kind of places but twitter or email is the best place to reach out and interact with me we also have the website ghost in the night podcast.com which is great for show notes links catch up on past episodes but reach out and let me know what you think about this particular concept This podcast is airing on Friday, is the first day of the storm, Area 51, so let's kind of talk about that for a little bit. Okay, well that time has officially come. The storm, Area 51 movement starts, I believe today, since this podcast will air on Friday. Now, I've covered this recently in a previous episode where I gave my thoughts. It's a stupid idea. Odds are there's probably nothing there whatsoever or once area 51 broke on the scene you know people knew about it really with bob lazar you know it really came to the forefront i'm sure the government was smart enough to move it move if if they had anything move whatever they had i'm not saying they do i don't know maybe they do maybe they don't but once it got out and people started asking questions i'm sure they moved it to a different location if they had something I really think this whole thing of Storm Area 51 is for nothing. It's just, you know, it it was started by a guy, a kid. Basically, it's a goof, and it just took off, and people are pretty stupid, and they basically said, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, you're an idiot. There's no way that you can actually storm Area 51. For one, the train's harsh, and if a bunch of people show up in flip-flops, a T-shirt, and a cooler full of beer, they're not going to make it. This place is designed to withstand enemy, foreign enemies. You think you and your cooler and your Bud Light is going to be able to get there? No. So it's a waste of time. Now, I like the idea that they've come up to make it, came up with the idea to make it a festival, and that's kind of been a clusterfuck from what I've understood, from what I've read about. The kid started to do it, and he basically told everybody, it wasn't happening, then somebody else had started to plan one in a nearby town. You know, it's going to be a music festival, apparently, and there's going to be some UFO speakers there, and I hear they're even going to actually screen Bob Lazar's recent documentary that's on Netflix, but they're going to have some celebrities there, probably some music, and porta potties which is always good in the desert, because, you know, I believe last at last I heard or read there was... They were expecting around 30,000 people to show up for this festival. You need a lot of porta potties. You can only take a dump so much in the sand. That's easy to, I guess, bury, I guess. But anyway, 
that's fine. I hope people that go, go just to have a good time, even though these type vessels always turn turn out to be a nightmare. That's why I wouldn't wouldn't go myself. But, you know, I hope they have a good time. I hope they talk about the UFO phenomenon and all the revelations that have come up here recently with the Navy actually trying to, or actually speaking out on it and giving an actual opinion saying, hey, we don't know. It is a real phenomenon. Um, some of the new shows, there's been three or four new shows that have taken off or at least been aired. So there is kind of a renaissance time in the UFO history because, you know, people are really starting to take it, I don't want to say seriously, but they're giving it a little bit more credibility than they have in the past. And I believe I just read that actually uh, some people came over from, I don't know, I think Denmark or Sweden or someplace like that and act for this event. And they decided to get an early start on it. And they decided to head on over to the gate, take pictures and cross the line. Hey, guess what? They got arrested. Now, I believe they were sentenced sentenced and fined. I think they they basically got out already and paid the fine and left. But that is basically what's going to happen. Why risk the chance of being incarcerated when there is nothing freaking there? And even if you could get close enough to it, that shit's tucked away. It's underground. There's no way... I don't care how many people you have could get through all that security because you can't even get to it unless you are experienced in dealing with the desert type conditions, the rattlesnakes, the scorpions. I mean, it's a joke and, but I wish them luck if they want to do try it, but I hope they enjoy the festival. They bring light to the UFO phenomenon because the UFO phenomenon is definitely real. I'm not saying it's, ET coming down from outer space, but there is definitely some unidentified flying objects floating around, and we don't know what they are. The Navy apparently doesn't know what they truly are. They could be a vast array of things. So the more people that kind of take it somewhat seriously and do some legitimate research, it's only going to help the situation maybe to come to a little bit closer of a conclusion on what the what people are experiencing now i'm not i don't want to get into abduct alien abductions or anything like that but there is a ufo phenomenon they people are seeing something in the skies now a lot of it can be attributed to top secret aircraft that we have i mean let's be honest we don't know what the government has and it's all they they're always 10 15 years ahead of us in their technology. So I'm sure um, most of the science can be attributed to top secret aircraft, but there is some footage and there have been some experiences that aren't the top secret type of aircraft. Now, but with that being said, you know, a lot has been said about the Navy's releasing the, you know, the gimbal and the Tic Tac stuff. And I will, and people have stated that, well, they released it. It's not theirs. The government is so compartmentalized. The right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. So that's not necessarily true. That footage is very interesting. I've seen them. I don't know what they are. I don't think they're a drone. Is it a test of a back engineered alien aircraft? Like a lot of people have stated, I don't know for sure, but it's very interesting. But anyway, we might dive into a little bit more of the alien type stuff because I personally don't know. When you talk about these UFOs and aliens, there is a possibility they're just multidimensional beings, not necessarily from galaxies far, far away. There's a very good chance that these are multidimensional beings coming through or we are at some certain points we are able to see these things that are actually in another dimension. We are going to tackle all that in future episodes. I do want to kind of, I'm reading a book, I know, shocker, that I want to cover. I don't want to do a lot of conspiracy theories stuff on this podcast, but I this one is kind of fascinating. And it can, if governments do cover up things and hide things and 
make things difficult to figure out. That could be part of the reason why there isn't a lot of research or the research into the paranormal isn't taken as seriously as it should be because there is, you know, there might be kind of a conspiracy to keep things hidden a little bit and keep us in the dark. So I'm going to cover that in a future podcast as well. Um, Quick update before we get out of here for today. Um, I have a lot of listeners on PodCoin. Apparently, PodCoin is going under. So if you listen to me on PodCoin, be sure to check out one of the other hosts so you can continue to enjoy this podcast. We are on just about every place. iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn. The list goes on. The list is enormous. But if you like this podcast and you listen to it on PodCoin, be sure to subscribe from one of those other apps or other podcast playing devices so you can continue to listen to the podcast and show your support. Don't forget, you can go to ghostofthenight.com and you can pick up a podcast t-shirt on multiple pages. It's right there on the homepage. See some t-shirts, click on it, and it'll take you to where you need to be to get a podcast t-shirt from me. I would greatly appreciate it. You can also, if you need some paranormal equipment, while you're there at the website, there's a link for the ghost stop. If you need some IR lights, you need new full spectrum cameras or digital recorders. They have a vast selection and I've bought stuff from them. And so I enjoy them. I'm glad they have partnered up with us to get paranormal investigators the equipment they need to give themselves the best chance to actually find and document some entities out there. Don't forget, follow me on Twitter at night underscore ghost. If you have a uh, experience you want to share or you have an opinion on the podcast or you want to let me know what you might want to hear about our topic in the way of topics, reach out to me via Twitter at night underscore ghost or send me an email at GITN podcast at gmail.com. We also have a Patreon account and that's patreon.com backslash GITN podcast. If you want to support us that way, just throw us a couple bucks and we give you some bonus content. You get all this content anyway for free, but I do post some Patreon only stuff. I'm putting some stuff together now. I have a couple, one thing on there now. I might even do some live stuff, but head on over there, check it out. That is a great way to check out videos of each podcast. YouTube, there's always YouTube. If you like YouTube, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell and let and they'll tell you when I upload a new podcast and or a investigation highlight video so until next week take care everybody